We, we finished uh, yesterday's conference where I wanted to say too much and I didn't say enough. Therefore, we finished it in our last conference with this important word and message and this request of Our Lady, which is the consecration, the total consecration of yourself. In fact, what is at stake? We must understand that God, the most holy, holy trinity, offers us, us poor, poor sinners, a mother and a queen. And he offers us such a helper which will be at our disposition perpetually, day and night. And this helper is nobody else than the mother of God herself, the queen of heaven and earth and of all saints and angels. She will come. She will take care of each one of us, especially in these latter times of the world. In all times, as we have seen, we need her, and she always, always brought all the, her children to heaven. Of course, in the name of her son, and by the grace of her son, not by their own grace. But she had this essential role as mediatrix of our graces to bring unto me all the gifts of the Holy Ghost, especially the graces of conversion of sanctification, and bring us close to Jesus, unite us with her Son, Jesus Christ, and so through Mary to Jesus, through Jesus to the Father. That is our way back home. As our way, we have to pass during this Valley of Tears. We have no other way. And this is the way. Jesus Christ is the way is the way who brings us to the Father. Mary is the way which bring, that brings us to Jesus. That's the law. And in these latter times, we will have no other possibility than just this last chance, just this last offer of God. Now God gives to the world the last means of salvation. If you don't take this means, then you are not able to make your salvation, or at least your salvation is in danger. And God does not want, as in former times, where he allows that most of the people wouldn't even realize that they owe everything after God to Mary, because God did hide them, that from them for any reason because the people wouldn't have yet penetrated in the whole mystery and the whole revelation of God. But now at the end of times, God allows us to understand all, all details of his revelations. And the last details of revelations, the last, let me say, flowers to show us from his divine truth, these flowers always have been in the church because from the death of the last apostle, all what Jesus Christ had to give to the world, all the truth had been revealed. But the truth had been revealed, the tension, like a, a, a picture, an immense bouquet of flowers. But this bouquet of flowers, wonderful lilies and roses, but the flowers and roses were yet closed. If you go fair shopping and you want to buy wonderful flowers, which should be really ready for Sunday, you know, you will not buy the flowers which are Friday all open, because Sunday, <laughs> nothing will remain. They will be, uh, well, they, 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 every woman knows that better than me, you know what. Huh? So, but if you buy the flowers, and um, which may be your husband or your children will see, oh, mom, what ugly things you bought. This, <laughs> what is this? Well, doesn't look like anything. And what is the astonishment of such a child when with the, with the, with the, with the watering and with the sun, with the time, suddenly this whoop opens. Wow. That's it, what we admire when the roses and the leaves open and show all their beauty. And so with the truth of faith. Many of them, everything was given, but not everything was explicit. It was implicit. It so was there, but God wanted that they, these flowers open only with the times. And then you see from the history very clearly how God wanted to open his truth to everybody. He started with himself. So in the first centuries, and that is due not only to the, to the meditation of the saints, the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, but also of the attacks of the enemies, of the heretics, where the holy faith has been more explicit thanks to the work of the doctors and the fathers of the church. And then you see that the flowers open little by little. The first, the second, the most holy trinity. Jesus Christ is God and man. You know, when Arius denied that Jesus Christ is God, then the first council of Nicaea declared as the dogma of the faith, Jesus Christ is God. 
And then he says our Lord Jesus Christ is man. First, the most holy trinity. And after the mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God and man together in one person. This was already more precise. So the beautiful mystery of Jesus Christ disclosed, in, especially in the 5th, 6th centuries, with the great councils of Ephesus, Chalcedon, etc., at that moment, we have the first Marian dogma is that Our Lady is the mother of God because she is, she is the mother of the Son who is God. This person whom she has given life and birth is God, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. And then afterwards, you will see in the, in, the, in, the, in, this, in the following centuries, not only God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, but the work of Jesus Christ. So it will be clearly defined and always more under understood what is the mystery of the holy, the sacraments, the mean of salvation, the church itself, the everlasting things. So that we believe in our, in our, I believe in God, all these details disclose and the flowers open. Especially with the work of the popes, of the fathers of the church, the doctors of the church and the universal councils. So especially the Universal Councils of Florence and Trident gave us so many, many light. Uh, and this is light is, of course, um, a light which is absolutely sure. It is infallible. It cannot err. It is the truth of God. It is a dogma of the faith where we learn very precisely about each one of the seven sacraments and the means of salvation, about the holy sacrifices of the Mass, and so on. But about our Lady... Uh, there were there were long time of course pious devotion of course our lady was more and more um, uh, uh, more and more considered but the flowers of our lady the mystery of our lady was not so much disclosed our lady herself came remember what I told you 12th 13th century she gave the rosary the brown scapula and so on and then more and more the people understood how she is necessary so God wanted to wait to make known to the world the details this beautiful flower which is there but not yet open to the latter times. And that happens, first of all, with the preparation of the great preparation of the great second dogma of the faith of, of Our Lady, which only was declared in 1854, the Immaculate Conception. With a, with a wonderful bull, uh, encyclical Mirabilis Deus, Admirabilis Deus, I forgot the name even, and, and this wonderful, great dogma of the faith made now like a boom. The Marian devotion grew everywhere in theology, in devotion, in controversy against the enemies, and especially in this fight I spoke about all the time. I will not repeat that. And so we are witness of a more and more understable understanding. Who are you, Amica Immaculata? Who are you? And so we learn about her eternal virginity, about her title of Mediatrix of all graces. And then the following dogma is also a Marian dogma in 1950, the last which has been pronounced, which is the assumption of our Lady to heaven with body and soul. And it should have been imagined the dogma of Mary, Matrix of Matrix of Graces, should have been declared. You and you know when, during the Second Vatican Council. That was the wish of the fathers before, and the Second Vatican Council made a a, a U-turn. Let me say a complete turn towards uh, towards heresy, towards Protestantism, towards ecumenism, towards the first and the second beast. In fact, and so. All Our Lady's privileges were somehow completely diminished and Our Lady has no place. She had to go. In, she had to be offered on the altar of ecumenism because we want to please the Protestants and the Jews and they have nothing to do with that terrible Mary, what they say. And so, my friends, we have this wonderful idea that now, in the latter times, God shows his masterpiece in all its brilliance, in all its greatness and, uh, and power. And now, when she shines before us, he wants to show how he, she will match. He gives to her, as I've I told you already, she, he gives to her the sword of the man in the latter times. When the devil will got on the top of his attacks, the anti-trinity, our lady appears, and then the woman clothed in sun will show and show to the whole world her power. So, 
And now God offers us this mother of Mary, this mother of God, and beca which we had become our mother who loves us so much. And now what we have to do is to accept this offer. We cannot just say, I will reflect about this. Our, ma our lady cannot enter in our hearts. She cannot beca become our way which leads us to Jesus. She cannot uh, become our, our, our lady of good counsel to enlighten our intelligence uh, in order to do at that moment, at each moment, what is good and to avoid what is bad. That is a counsel. She cannot be our lady of perpetual health, really, if we do not give ourselves to her. In other words, she cannot be our mother if we not be, want to be really their children. She cannot be our queen if we do not want to be her servants and slaves. And she cannot be our general-in-chief if we do not want to be her instruments, her knights, her soldiers, her legionaries, or whatever you want to name that. And therefore, the first... The, most important thing, remember that, you ask me all the time, what shall I do in my home? How shall I live my consecration to Mary? What shall I do that Mary really comes into my life? The first is consecration. And this is Our Lady's word herself. This is the message of all Marian saints. The, they focus all around this great word, consecration. Consecration, consecratio, is to give up yourself to Our Lady. In fact, it is the imitation of her fiat. The imitation of her fiat. And you can again use the threefold angel of the Lord in order to repeat with her the fiat. She said yes to God. She said yes to all what God wanted from her. And you say yes to all what she wants from you. And you say especially yes to all to all what she wants to give you. She gives you the whole fullness of God. She gives you all the graces you need and even much more. She wants to give you 100,000 times more than you would ever be able to get. And if you would be more, 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 more uh, child of Mary, more devoted to her, more open, and your yes would be more serious, the more she gives you. There is no end. Because that from where, from where she gets is infinite. It is God's grace. It is an infinite grace. She is the channel of God's grace. And this channel is her heart, which contains these graces and wants to give you as much as you want, because she wants. And therefore depends on that what you have to do. If you want now to raise your children well, if you want to, 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 to have a success in your educational life, if you want to do any good to anybody and make her known and loved, especially in your own family, you must realize that I must bring the people to make the consecration. That is the thing. A consecration, you can start with a very beautiful idea and you teach the small children the beautiful prayers of Our Lady, which we say, Oh my mother, oh my queen, I give myself, I'm all thine, I, I belong to you. And you give the first little prayers for the children, which, are part, which is a part of morning prayers, where we hand down ourselves, we, 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 we give ourselves to Our Lady in the morning with all what we have. I give you... In order to prove my devotion, I give you my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, all myself. Because I am thine now, take me and guide me and protect me as your own and your property. You know that prayer, hopefully, very well. But this is a wish. It's not, it's just a beginning. But this is just a pious wish. The same pious wish you find if, for instance, a young girl, you see it in the writings of St. Teresa of Child Jesus, a young girl, you know, feels the vocation. And the young girl wants to be the bride, the spouse of Jesus Christ, and she writes to Jesus Christ little letters, my Lord, my Lord and my God, I am your little spouse, and you are my bridegroom. Oh, my Lord Jesus Christ, I belong to you entirely, your little spouse, Teresa, your little spouse, Anne, or whatever you want. That is a why a pious wish, because you know very well that you become spouse of Jesus Christ through the vows of religion. And this is not the little girl. It's just a good wish. It's wonderful. Jesus Christ, he loves such things, but that's not yet a consecration. It's a wish, an act, a pious act. So we must distinguish, you know, between consecration and consecration. 
The other thing you have to avoid is to mix up and to make the consecration of that what it is written in our prayer books. It's just a prayer, a beautiful prayer amongst many others. That's not the essence of, of, of a consecration. The very prayer itself is a beautiful flower, a beautiful bouquet of flowers which surrounds your act of consecration. It's a beautiful expression with the details what the consecration may mean that you will find in the very beautiful, outstanding acts of consecration both of Grignon de Montfort and of Saint Maximilian Kolbe. And afterwards, the beautiful consecration of Pius XII to the Immaculate Heart, the world of the Immaculate Heart. So you see these acts. But the act of consecration is nothing but a firm act of will. And the act of will, this is this. I want, you know how important such an act of will can be, you see, when you get married. Your marriage is, your marriage and the sacrament of marriage is in fact only an act of will. An act of will rebinds you your whole life. And God accepts this, you know. And this, in fact the same thing if, a, if somebody goes to the orders or becomes religious, in the moment where he pronounces the vows of religion as an act of will. I want to be poor, I want to be pure, I want to be obedient totally. And to become a priest, exactly. The priest, the bishop asks, the, the, the archdiacon, uh, archdiacon asks, always the arch, um, um, uh, asks uh, the name and the, and the candidate answers atsum, which is the the Latin translation of the fiat of, of the behold the handmaid of the Lord. This is always the same thing. So, and this act of will, you know, this is meditated. You do not do such like that. You will not say, oh, tomorrow maybe I get married. We come to the priest. Hello, my friend, let's get married. Do you want? Yes. Do you want? Yes. Okay, you are married for your whole life. Hey, please. Nobody will do that, huh? <laughs> and if you say, you know, say, your own, oh, I feel the vocation, you go to the priest, and the priest will, 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 will receive your, will receive your vows of religion for the whole life. What is this? A terrible thing. Therefore, it is absolutely not allowed, even if somebody is bishop, even in the in difficult times, just to take the people from the street and give them the priestly ordination. As unfortunately this happens with our poor Bishop Williamson, who actually commits objectively very terrible mortal sins because it's absolutely forbidden just to ordain people like that who have no preparation, who have not reflected about it, who have no no structure where they can lift their priesthood. This is a this is a beginning of an absolute catastrophe, and we know more and more people who have been ordained that way and have fallen apart and lose now. They are ordained priests, of course, validly, but they lose everything and they have a very, very, very bad end. I have such a couple of people like that in Poland. It's a pity like this. It's a very big pity, you know. But I didn't want to speak about this. I wanted to tell you here the importance of a good preparation of the act of consecration. The act of consecration is a similar act of will where you really understood. You cannot make that act of will if you don't understand very well who are you, who is Our Lady. And that is what I try to explain you that and may be deeply better than ever before you can understand now that what is the, who is Our Lady and what is her role in your life, especially in these latter times. And then, when you see that you are complete and that it's God's will, that you are the child, behold your mother, behold your son. So, that is an order that is not just, um, just a, a pious wish. Our lady is really now my mother, and she wants to be my mother in its full extent. So, now, what is the great consecration according to Saint Grignon de Montfort. What is his grace? You know, the grace that we have to become now children of this mother and children in the full extent. That is the true devotion. That is nothing but that. The true devotion is to understand as much as we can what means she is my mother and what means that I am her child. That, that, that understand what it means, she is my queen and my domina, my 
my, 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 the word mistress is not good here, but you know what I mean, pa, domina, and I will be her servant and moreover her slave. That's the will of God. That's the whole idea of the true devotion you find in the wonderful book of the true devotion of Saint Grignard de Montfort and in the act of consecration. And for what is that consecration? How Our Lady enters in your life like this. This consecration act of will that from now on, everything what I am and what I have belongs to you entirely. Take it entirely. And that is a very, very important thing. It is an act of donation. An act of donation signed by you. Signed by you. And, and normally contra signed by the, by the minister of the church. And so you have, you have this act of donation, you gave, your, gave yourself. And from this moment on, in fact, you are not anymore the master of your own life. In all things, you have behaved to behave like a child towards her parents. A little child will not decide itself where he will go, what he will do, um, to whom he will, he will speak. The child will always uh, ask the parents and lets himself guide by the parents who show him, no, don't do go there, this is dangerous, don't do that, Plus, please do that, and so on. And the child is safe because the parents know. The child doesn't know. The child is completely off the possibilities to know whether this person is dangerous or not. The child will run to a person and this person will rob it. That's not possible. The parents know. They protect the child, they guide the child, and the child will be obedient. And the better the child, the better, the more will be obedient and devote and confident and trust his parents who know what is the way. Even if human parents can err and can make mistakes, this parent, this mother never makes any mistake. On the very contrary, if you give yourself entirely to her, she will lead you absolutely towards heaven. Absolutely, she will guide you. Now, this giving yourself to Our Lady is general, everything, and that's the prayer. But now this must be realized in every day's life. Now, the every day's life is that what we have to do. So, so, so that we have to live every day. You have your day. You stand up, you take, you, you, you clothe yourself, you wash yourself, hopefully, and, um, and, and then you eat something and you start your work and do your work day and you have your rest and you have your lunch and then you have your siesta and after you have your coffee and you have your tea time and you have all that kind of stuff of, of people you meet, you love and you love not and then after this in the evening you are dead tired and you fall into the beautiful bed and the day is over. Everybody all the same, the time, the other time the same thing. And now all these details must be directed, must be guided by Our Lady. In all these things, I must do all these things. That is the formula of Montfort. That is, we must do all these little things with Mary, through Mary, in Mary, and for Mary. So that she can take over, and now she puts herself into us. That is the union of my little heart with her heart. She guides me. She comes into me. I come into her. And then she is the way which brings me to Jesus. And therefore I do the same things perfectly for Jesus because I do them with Mary who loves Jesus above all. In Mary who lives in God above all. By Mary who is the way which brings leads us to God. And so on. And that is the way we have to see. Now, it's very important. Afterwards, we will see this is the, these two things are given by Grignon de Montfort. This is Grignon de Montfort's con 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 consecration. This is Maximilian Kolbe's consecration, to which you can add the act of consecration of, uh, of the legionary of, Legion of Mary. The same, the same idea, you know. But this is here, Maximilian Kolbe. I will meditate about these acts of consecration. Uh, about the sense. I will not uh, pray with you the prayers. You can do that yourself. That is not a problem. You find it in the Christian warfare, the prayer, especially the first prayer, and the second prayer you find in the Militia Immaculata at the end. Very beautiful prayer of Maximilian Kolbe uh, of the, to the Immaculata. These consecrations are different. Why? Why they are different? Because, you know, you give yourself. So what you give makes the act of consecration. When you say, if I give myself entirely, so I have given everything, I can make another act of consecration. Yes, yes or no. Because, look, 
If you meditate about all what Kinyan Nemofa gives you, he will teach you to be a child and a slave. He will teach you who is Mary as your mother and queen. And that is important. But he will never speak, almost never, just two little, little um, uh, places in his whole treatise, another world, the other part of our being, which is our relationship to the others. What is our duty in this world? And this will be the great theme of Maximilian Kolbe with a special consecration, this time not anymore as children, not anymore as slave, but as instrument in her immaculate hands in order to help her, help her to save souls, to do our work in the militant church. So takes us now, now let us go on one after the other. Here let us see. That is exactly also the great theme Our Lady, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, repeats us that what I said to you yesterday very briefly in the beginning in the center of Fatima is the glory of God, the honor of God. And the honor of God is made in Fatima. I hope we come back to that. But the time is getting very short, my dear friends. I have so much to say that I've already, already, I'm already mixing up the things. Sorry, you know, the end is coming. The goal is getting end, and the poor, poor tortures coming more, 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 more. You know, that's 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 life. Okay, uh, you you may pardon me, uh, but this is our ladies desire that we give ourselves really to our to to God through the Immaculate Heart the Immaculate Heart you know what she wants to do what she asks to do all the time which is which will be the spirituality especially of little Francis is console God God is so much offended you should not offend God anymore because it's too much already, says Our Lady. And afterwards, Francis will always meditate that. He says, I love to see Our Lady. I love to see, um, to see the Immaculate Heart. And I want to pray for the salvation of saints and of sinners. But that what shocked me the most, touched me the most, that is God. He saw in this vision, God in the visions he saw on the 13th of May, June and July, and he repeats that God is so sad. God is so sad because he is insulted by all our sins. Oh, what could I do in order to comfort him, to console him? When the angel gives to the children of Fatima the communion, he says, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, horribly, you outraged by the horrible sins of man. You know, rep um, um, repair their, their crimes and console your God. Now, console your God is, you know, that is love. That is the essential of love of God. And this is the essential of that what Our Lady wants to give through this consecration. You know, what is the child that is the best child? The best child is that who loves the mother the most. The best child of God is the, the child who loves God the most. Love Jesus Christ. And this is the greatest commandment we have. The commandment to love God above all. You know it very well. That's the great commandment. Jesus Christ is ours. Thou love, thou love God your Lord with all your might, with all your strength, with all your possibilities. This is an order. And this is what Jesus Christ wants. And this is the only, 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 only way to holiness. The holiness is the perfect love of God. Not what you did in your life. Not the thousand things which we are occupied but which with, with which much love you have accomplished even the mean little nothings and banal things of your life. At the evening of our life, we will be judged on the love, on the measure of love we had to God and to the neighbors, say St. Teresa of Child Jesus and before St. John of the Cross. Now, this is exactly what Our Lady wants to give in a world, remember, where the love of God doesn't exist anymore. You know, to love God, this is the most important thing. The love of God I have here, console him. Who has the idea to console Jesus Christ when he is kicked out from all, 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 all departments of life? Can you imagine that a child who loves very much his mother, and now he sees that they are here, bandits come, terrible criminals, and the child is there and sees now how they insult the mother, how they beat the mother, they try to kill the mother, you know? And then the mother is in their blood. She is dying. She is in terrible, insulted by all the whole world. 
And the child now comes to her. He cannot help her. He cannot heal the wounds. He cannot do anything. But he can, he can try to console her mother. I'm with you. And the mother will be mostly consoled when the little child comes and tries to keep your little hand and take a little bit the blood away and with his loving, with his loving eyes looks into the eyes of the mother. Mother, I would like to console you so much. I love you so much. Oh, the mother will be consoled. That's it, what you have to think. It's just normal. That is a wonderful way how we show our love to God and to our lady. And this is the same thing with Jesus Christ. You know, that is what our lady had to suffer on the cross. And she would like so much to console her son. And she couldn't do anything just to be there. And that was his greatest consolation. Our lady of consolation is that. That she consoled her son, she is being present, present and not fainting at the footsteps of the cross, except in all tortures and sacrifice in your heart in order to be faithful to him, even if not doing anything and suffering anything visibly herself. That's so important. So then you see, when you see our Lord Jesus Christ, he who saved you, who came for you, for me, in order to, to, to get me out of the fires of hell, to pay all my debts, to share all his blood for me, all, each and the, even the last drop. Today is Friday, meditate about that. Each part of his life is just for me until the, 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 the remaining amongst us in this little, in the, in this little, in this little uh, wooden house which we call the tabernacle. Staying there day and night waiting for me. Such a love. Wherever you show, it's just all out of love for me. And this love, as he says when he appeals to Margaret Mary, this love is despised. That what he hurts his love, his sacred heart or more, that this immense love of his heart is not considered even by the best people, those who are consecrated to him, they neglect him, they are indifference. That hurts the heart. If you love somebody with all your heart, and this this other person shows you just the cold shoulder and uh, treats you like 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 the air, like if you didn't exist, that hurts. That hurts. You know, nothing perverse than a love which is deceived by indifference of the beloved. That's horrible. And that is what Jesus Christ receives from us all, from the whole world. Now, Jesus Christ is the King of the kings, the Lord of the lords. Everything is his own. Everybody, everybody has to fall down on his knees. And where, where he is, they kick him out. They kick him out from everywhere. God, the devil, is, 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 is about to win all the places, and he has won all the places. They kicked him out of his, of his creation, of his own creation. He came in his own, and those who belong to him, they did not receive him, my friends. They didn't receive him. Non recepere on deum, we say at the end of each, uh, of, each, of each Mass in the last Gospel. You know, that was terrible. The world didn't receive him. His own people, they rejected him. And today, then the first peace came and killed the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Tried to get him out of politics, of economics, of the public life, of art, of education. Nothing more. Out, out. No place for you. Go. That's it. We don't want that this will reign, that this man will reign of us. No, we don't want him. That is the shout of the first beast. That's the shout. I will not serve God. I will not serve this king out of him. And then the second beast, you know, he had this refuge in the tabernacles in the churches where all the people came, even if they had been thrown out, Jesus Christ out, thrown out, and the people were scattered, and they were, they were sad that he didn't come. So they, they came to console him in the churches. They came to kneel down before the tabernacle, make atonement, and pray, and pray, and pray. Wonderful Christianity in the beginning of the 20th century, and so on. They wanted to, to, to follow him. And then came the second beast and kicked him out of the churches. And the tabernacles are closed and the churches are closed. And everything is there only for man and not for Jesus Christ, our Lord. What, what a terrible sorrow. What must, must be for the king of the kings to be homeless? To have no kingdom anymore, apparently, of course. You know, out, be, 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 be kicked out of, of his own kingdom. What is this a terrible thing? And what is the worst that the people are so indifferent. And what? Well, that's your business, Jesus. If it's like that, it's like that. No! We must console him. We must see Jesus, my Lord. If 
everybody kicks you out. Please come into my heart to find in my heart a little place, a place where you will be welcomed, where somebody keeps attention on you, thinks about you, loves you, consoles you, asks your fervor. That's love. That's consoling the Lord. Now ask yourself where we are with that love. Who will bring now that love into our hearts? Why it's just in Fatima that all this is, a, is, is Our Lady teaches us. You see? That's the reason why she's so important. We should do that if we can't. And therefore she is sent to us to put into our lazy hearts, in different hearts, more and more of this love. She will teach us how to console her son. She takes us with us. She takes us with her unto the footsteps of the cross and makes us understand the great love of Jesus Christ. And a little bit, our stony hearts will change, will change a little bit and become hearts with more and more little sparks of fire. And then it will change. That's her business. That's her work. And therefore, we need, as St. Kenyon the Fourth says, to do all things with Mary, by Mary. And that way, in that way, we will start to love God. Now, ask yourself about this question. Love of God, with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Where are we? We know very well. If I make a little exam of conscience, I feel myself so bad, so ashamed. I am just absolute wretch. I feel myself little, really, really not worthy to lift up my eyes to Jesus who loves me so much, to Mary who loves me so much, and I am so indifferent. Look, take the love of a man in this world. Take the love of a girl who has fallen in love with her, with her, with her prince of China, of, 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 of you know, the, 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 the good, 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 the, 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 the beloved, you know, you know, and she, when she always thinks she has his beautiful picture with his smile here, and when she opens her eyes, my beloved, and she kisses the picture as much as he can, you know, all day over, my beloved. And then she receives a letter from him. Wow! And she will read it and kiss it and read it over again until she knows my heart. Now, that's the love. So, you can imagine, if somebody falls in love in a beloved person, a girl into a boy, boy into a girl, you can imagine how much she thinks about him all the time, even in dreams. She wakes up, is he here? Ha, not yet here, but he comes. Yes, next week he will come. I wait, I wait, I count the hours, I count the seconds, I count the minutes. That's it. That is the love. This is normal in our life. All the time falling in love. I have seen it so much when I, when I, when, when we go give the, 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 the catechism lessons and I see a boy, a boy, you know, he is so smiling and he looks <laughs> everywhere but not on that and say, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> so, is it interesting? Yes. <laughs> what did I say? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, is she okay? Yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it. Catechism, go out. Go ahead. I have my dream and I'm happy. You see? And what we do? You know, all the time the beloved is thinking about the beloved. And here we have the love itself. The source of all love. The source of all love. That you can love anybody that you receive from our Lord and from our Lady. If not, you have not even an uh, atom of love in you. It's from them. Then you take all the love of all people together. It's always from them. So this is just a ray of the love of the son of love, which is Jesus Christ. He wants to give you and he loves you. And my answer, almost never I think about him. Never I think about him. Very, very rarely. So my love is well. If you love somebody, moreover, not only think, you want to be a beloved with the beloved. What is the beautiful messages they write to one another? I miss you! That's it what you have if you have not the beloved besides you. I miss you! I hope that all the young mothers here have your children, they have in their heart one big, big oh, I miss my children. Tomorrow I am back. Huh? It's normal, no? I hope, I hope so. Huh? So, that's it. So, and where is this I miss you of Lord Jesus Christ? Sunday Mass, uh, where we go to Mass. There is no miss you, there is no preparation, there is no excitement. 
Next Sunday, I will receive him again. Jesus waits for me. I am far from the church, but I would like to be there every day. And if I can be every day, I would go there. You see, that's I miss you. That is who, somebody who wants to be close to the beloved. If you meditate about the simple, singular love of a, of a girl really falling in love up to the ears, behind the he ears, we would say, uh, into their beloved, and you compare that with our love to Jesus Christ, where is here with all our love, with all our might? Nothing is there. Absolutely nothing. Our love, if it any exists, is so mean, is so inconstant, is so, so superficial, and so easily just away. This beloved, can you imagine if now the beloved makes a mistake and would be not delicate to her beloved, his beloved girl, and says a word which is a little bit too much, a word which is too harsh, or a thing which, which or, 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 or a gesture of his life that, that, that she, she will see in the burn and she will be scared. And she will look, it's all right with you. I don't understand why you use these words. And then he, f he realizes that I, I, I didn't take the, word, the right word. I, I was not delicate enough. So he will ask pardon. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you at all. Even to hurt the beloved is for us a torture. To hurt a little bit. And we, we, we have no problem to hurt our Lord Jesus Christ from morning to the evening with so, so many venial sins. And sometimes even with mortal sins, which is to kill him, to try to kill him. This is what we do without any problem, you know. If, if, if we have hopefully free from mortal sin, we have such an easy, easy way for nothing, you know, we insult him. We have no problem with that. No problem with that. And so many times, you see. So please, let us be humble and say, my love towards God is a catastrophe. A catastrophe. Now, how to get this love in? How to get the love of God? I try. I make efforts. I promise. I promise my Lord Jesus Christ from now on, I will love you with all my heart and all my strength. And you go out of the room, you go out of the retreat and see a person you don't love so much and you... And it's finished. Where is the love of God? The will of God to be gentle with her and again just you see her and, I, and again, puff. What is that? And you feel yourself really ashamed. I cannot even uh, some hours live in this pure love of God. He gives me, for instance, after a wonderful confession where he purifies me and makes me love him for a little moment, really, with all my heart. And then this all my heart is already gone. So, e so catastrophe. And now, imagine this love of God is the condition of my holiness. You don't go to heaven if you don't love God perfectly. If you love him at as much as you have at least said definitely no to the devil, which means that you have regretted your mortal sins or not have committed anymore, then you go to purgatory. But the purgatory is the purification that all what is not love in you, what is remnants of egoism, selfishness and lack of generosity, all that will be burnt as dirt. And therefore, the less love you bring in the moment of your death, the more you will have to suffer in purgatory. That's, that's clear. It must be a total purification that you are ready to pick like gold, which is free from all, all this dirt around, must be purified in fire. And this is the fire of purgatory, which is so so terrible that St. Ambro Saint Jer Jer Jerome says, Hieronym Hieronymus says, St. Jerome says, he says that one minute in our languages in the purgatory is here worse than burn 100, 100 years in fire. So much it is the suffering, the suffering in order to get back or to receive this fullness of love. But we are not all, ever all, 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 all sure that we match it into purgatory. We have not that sec security. Therefore, we had a great deal. And you will not be so mean and so, so terrible with our Lord and our Lady. Well, here on earth, I will love you at the minimum. I will try to avoid mortal sin. For the rest, I will be happy to do that in purgatory. And you are not interesting for me. This is a terrible insult. This is a terrible, a terrible indelicacy to what somebody who loves you so much it's impossible to react like this now 
who gives me now this love? From whom I get this love? Who will teach me little by little that my life, my daily life, my actions, my words, my thoughts, my deeds, my thoughts, my living, my legs and my hand and my whole being becomes more and more love and less and less anti-love which is the destruction of love which is egoism which is selfishness which is attachment to things to creatures or to myself who our lady she has received the fullness of love has she not received the holy ghost entirely remember what we said she is the spouse of the holy ghost and the holy ghost is the love of god himself in Our Lady, everything is love and only love. All things, perfect love. She has loved God with all her might, all her strength, and she alone. And she became my mother. And that's the great, great, great task of Our Lady in the latter times. That we, now, we want to make ourselves dependent on her. And that she teaches us to love God. And therefore we must make the act of consecration. I must want that. My, 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 oh, my mother, it's a hard work you are about to accomplish in me. But you accomplish in me. I have nothing to do than to say yes. Yes, I want. Yes, I want. And then to repeat it all the time. Because you say in the morning yes, and in the afternoon you say no. Or you say in the morning yes, and the afternoon say no. In the evening say again yes, and in the night you say no. And each no is a running away from our lady. And that cannot happen. Therefore, we must make this act of consecration. The very act of consecration, once the first time, in a, after a very beautiful preparation, as St. Clinion of Four asked, 33 days. And then, that's from then on, renew this act of consecration. Not so much the long, beautiful prayer, you can also always repeat, but the act the central, I am all thine, my mother. And that you repeat all the time like an adjectory prayer. I am all yours. Take me entirely. Mother, I love you. Please, take me. Don't allow me that I run away from me. I get separated from you. Mother, I ask you, keep strong my hand if I want to I wanna, I wanna go my own ways. Keep it. I don't want to run away. But I'm so weak. I am so weak. I fall down. Please, please. And so, Mother Mary, help. Mother Mary, help. Mother Mary, help. That's what we have to say all the time. These are the ways. We have no others. But then, you see, we must not only make beautiful ejaculatory prayers to ask her and to renew this, this decision, now take my life into your hands. I am like a ship, and this ship is going towards hell because of all my sins. And now the ship must change and turn, turn into the opposite direction. And I am not able to turn it. Because the winds and the dangers and the attacks of the two beasts are so strong that everything pushes me, pushes me fully towards hell. This is our times. I have no chance if I try by myself I will, uh, and f further on. Now I give my, myself to Our Lady. She gets the captain of my ship. And she takes this, 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 this thing. I don't know what is in English. You know, this, you know, this little thing which changed the ships in the other side. And then what I can do, you know, I, I have this, this, this row and uh, uh, <coughs> doesn't work. It's too strong with the winds. The devil is too strong with his beasts, the dragon. And then she comes. I belong to her. I gave myself to her. Now, my child, if you really want, I take care. And then, and I with her, my little hands keep this thing, and her hands keep it also. And then she, by her strength, by her power, my little hands have no power, by her power, the thing is going. And there is a wind, and there is an attack, and there are all the enemies, and there is the armada of all the bandits, what you want. The whole, whole Freemasonry you can together, whatever the devil has. No problem. Back way to God. That's our lady, in our times, for you. That's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Now start to realize that. All things with our lady. I am very late. But you have, a, you have only one, one, one conference this morning, so I will exaggerate now. Torture continues. Yes, yet five minutes, plus 22% VAT. Good. 
Because this is important. All this is a beautiful theory, beautiful wishes, beautiful emotions, which fill your heart hopefully very much now. Oh, that's just wonderful. I have a chance. I can become a saint in spite of all. I can, I can match that my kids, my children, beloved, can become saints in spite of all the mobile phones and all the attacks and all the devils around. Wow, is it not great? Now what do you have to do? Please don't start to convert first your husband and your children. Convert yourself. Start with yourself. If not, you will do anything. As I have told you, a grandma who wants a good, a good grandma, the best being a grandma for her, ch for her kids and for the grandchildren is her example. The calm of the grandma who has the rosary in the hands, who wisely speaks about things, who doesn't make them dependent herself on her mobile phones, who has a, a regular life, has a smile in them, who carries, who carries, who uh, carries her sickness and her 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 uh, the, the, the 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 difficulties of of aging with a with a with a great resignation and shows the children of the love of God, the example of a soul united with Jesus Christ. You can be the best educator if you are not linked to Our Lady in your daily life. You do not do anything. The children learn much more from the long-term example of her parents and grandparents than through any any kind of systematic or, um, uh, or skill of pedag pedagogic skill. You must know that. Of course, I don't deny the necessary of pedagogic skill. You must do many things others. But the first thing is this example. So you must start to, to let Our Lady in. When you have given yourself to Our Lady as a child and your slave, you must now to try to be a child and a slave. A child and a slave. The slave was slave you don't maybe love, but it's like that. Make it, that is to say, make yourself dependent entirely to our, on Our Lady. And how this is going on? Let's start with the first, 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 first thing in your day. And here you see what is happening. What is the first thing in your day? Waking up. Isn't it not that? Waking up. That's a thing. That's a so important thing that I must speak about this. On this behalf, will your first act of the day, the f first thing of the day will be an act of love or an act of selfishness? All depends on that. I think the more than the half of your day depends on this first moment. Now what happens? When it happens, you have not slept well, the AC is so loud, outside it is so hot, you know, the neighbor is <laughs> huh, and so on. Mm, huh? And you went to bed when you are at home, you went to bed late because you had to finish your, your, your YouTube films to look and your chats <laughs> and your conversations with uncle and auntie and everybody. And so in the morning you have to stand up normally at six o'clock. And at six o'clock this torture comes. Drrrm! And you say, no, no, no. <laughs> what is the first reaction normally? Have you understood? I have not my mobile phone here. When I got my first mobile phones, I was just surprised. I see the functions, look at this. And then I found the function which I found in all mobile phones. I didn't understand what it means. It was called snooze. <laughs> Ask uh, the specialist what means snooze. What is this? No, <laughs> I would just tell me that is this our nature that you have to stand up. You will not stand up, and then after five minutes or ten minutes, according to the, it it calls you again and again and again and again, and that is a snooze thing, which is an, which is so normal that is no no by the phone of the billions of mobile phones in the world who has not that function and is very much used that function. And that is very clearly because we have a difficulty to get out in, of, of the bed in the morning because of thousand things. And this is exactly because this little bed is so wonderful. So <laughs> uh, uh, it's either inside so fresh and cold and outside so hot or the, or, or the, or the other side. And now bad weather and I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> and that's now the question. What will I do now in the very beginning of the day? Will my first answer 
because the, 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 the clock which reveals me, in fact, what it is. For what I make it at 6 o'clock? Because with my reason I understand, I need to get up at 6 o'clock in order to do well my morning prayer, to prepare well my day, to have a good, good coffee, and, and, and not uh, uh, stomachache after the... Blah, 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 huh? Huh? And afterwards I am ready to do my daily work. This is the plan. This is the will of God. So it's the will of God. You say, it's the will of Our Lady. It is the will of God. God shows His will. His con will. That is what I want to do, you to do. And I come now with my own will. The will of God, to accomplish the will of God, is an act of love. To accomplish your own will is an act of egoism, of selfishness, of your own, own little, little, little feeling of happiness, or whatever you have in that moment. Huh? <laughs> huh? So, in this moment, you have to decide. You wake up, and now you see, you must decide. Normally, our nature, our, our poor, weak, weak nature, brings us always down into this egoism, because we are wounded. You have not naturally the idea, up and will of God. Naturally, we are down in our fallen nature with the remnants of original sin. Don't ignore that. So it's an effort you must make. And this effort is an act of love. Just this effort. No, I will not follow my own will. I am all thine. And this all thine is to do all things by Mary. Now Our Lady comes and she gives you the strength. That's the mystery of Our Lady. That's her work. That's her, her teaching us and guiding us and being our perpetual help. When I belong to her, Our, our Lady, she will in the morning give me, the ex she excites me and she gives me the strength if I only ask her. And that will she the first victory of the day. I renounce to, my own, to myself. If you want to follow me, you may renounce yourself. You may take your cross every day, and so you can follow me, says Jesus Christ. So, to do things by Mary, says St. Kinyon Montfort, is to resign to your own proper will, to your own proper desires, to your own proper fantasies. No, I don't know this. I, my my rotten, rotten nature, my laziness, I want to stay in bed. No, I offer this. And I renounce to myself, to the, to the comfort, to have a, some minutes more in this wonderful little bed. And I offer myself and I stand up. I stand up because it's your will. Then you have started through Mary. And you have an act of love. You have renounced to yourself and you have you chosen the will of God. That is not wonderful. This is how to learn love. You know, if you don't do that the first thing of the day, of the next thing of the day, you will not do neither. Mostly. Now, it's very important that you continue that. The things to do by Mary, Our Lady, St. Clinion Manfort says, it's not sufficient. Then you have now, now make a decision, yes, it's six o'clock, I stand up. And you stood up. And you have now not wasted your time. You will not late. Because if you don't stand up, don't think that that will be easy. Snooze number one, bang. Snooze number two, bang. Snooze number three, ah! And now, and now, if I miss my place, if I miss my car, if I miss my, my, my bus, if I miss my plane, if I miss this business, miss, 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 I am not ready at the bed. And then you rush, you know. You get up and then brr, 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 yeah? no time for nothing. And you are excited in total stress. And you want to go to the bathroom. The bathroom is occupied. <laughs> dun, 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 I must go to the bathroom. Why don't you? Mm, mm. And the uh, if I, how are you? No, let me in. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Um, so, you know what happens? With this little laziness and egoism of the first of the day, you become a torture for everybody. Everybody. You make, you make sins against charity, impatience, prayer. Forget it, the prayer, you know? You must say, and you, quickly, the coffee, bong, bong, bong. Eh? You have no time, and then rush, rush, rush. And, the car, and, the, and, the, and of course, the train or the bus, just before your eyes, gang. <laughs> And then after this whole horror of the morning, because of this too long snooze, you came to your working place completely exhausted. <laughs> uh, 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 and you need first the rest. <laughs> Just to the contrary. You see what that is the consequence of these little first egoisms. Therefore, start with that in your resolutions. Always this is the moment, the first moment in your day. But then, 
with Mary. Now with Mary, this is very important. Our Lady does want that you do it by her, that you follow her will. This is the first thing. But he, she wants more. You want to do it perfectly. Now you have begun with the love. Continue to do it with love. Do it like me. Imitate Mary. Imitate Our Lady. What does that mean? So that means very simply that you want that your getting up, your wake up, may be more and more similar. With her, you show to her as your ideal, your model, and you want to get up as she got up. Now, how Mary got up? Because she slept, imagine, she slept also well. And when she got up, she got again conscious. And what was her first act? You can just imagine how she fell on her knees. And she made that great, 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 mysterious, wonderful gesture she shows us in Lourdes when she explains who she is. This total abundance to God. This total everything of herself gives now an act of immense love to God and God's love comes in her and that is the exchange of love. Living in the most holy trinity. That is the first act of Our Lady. Was certainly very brief. She had so, so much to do. But that was so much that all, all love of all angels and the saints cannot equal that moment. And I want to have the same thing. I can't, but I can meditate her. She wants that. Do that with her. She will teach you like mother teaches a little child. Do it like that. And you will kneel down the first thing. Not rush first, because the first thing today, what you get. Imagine you had already the chance to stand up at the time to fill in the will of God against your snooze self-will. What is the first gesture of everybody? Mobile phone, what's going on? That's it. It's terrible. When I make a, the recollection of the, of the recollection day of the priests, the first thing I did, what is your first thing of the day? And they say me, mobile phone. Of course, it's not mobile phone in order to play. But the first thing is, how many messages is this? What is happening? Ah, uh, this one, this one, this one. No, no, no. Our lady's first, our lady's first reaction. Who has the first place in my life? The things in this world, my duties of state, is all important. My contacts, my daily life, not important. The first place is to God, to glorify God, to give myself to God, to adore Him, to worship Him. What you make in the morning prayer, very extensively. That you make in the moment when you stand up. Then you make the things with Mary. Then you have started with an act of pure love. Then you have loved God with all your heart, all your mind, with all your strength, at least at the first moment of the day. That's Our Lady who gives that to you. Then you ask her humbly to give you this grace. And you have given her yourself. You want now to be the faithful child. She will teach you first to be a good child. And to good, the good child when he starts his day in getting up. Be now a perfect child of Mary. Getting up in the morning. Do it with her, through her. And you will see. I say it already so many times during my life. And the people will, will, would, would say to me, Father... Father, that changed my life after the retreats. That changed my life. I could not ever imagine what an impact has this first moment in my life. So think about this. Now I have made my, my, my score. One hour and three minutes. <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.